My apologies for the much darker light than usual. I expected it to be sunny for some reason and it's very, very cloudy, windy and rainy outside. So we're still going to do this though because I have waited a few days to open this in order to be able to open it on camera. And I simply do not want to wait longer because I am way too excited. I have made, and this is not an exaggeration, the most exciting purchase of my life. A little preface on this. I have never touched in real life a medieval manuscript. I have seen them in museums many, many times, but they are always encased in boxes and I've, I've never touched one. I've never touched real vellum. I think the oldest manuscripts I have touched are 18th century and those are, you know, ink and paper and materials that still exist today. But somewhere between that curiosity and also my unexplainable love for medieval things, especially manuscripts, I thought it would be a great idea <laughs> to make the really exciting purchase of a manuscript leaf. I am somehow able to get this in my hand and it is incredible to me and I'm almost a little scared of opening it because not because I'll be disappointed of course I won't but you know when you've been waiting for something for a very long time and then it happens and then it's it's like checking off this very big thing from your bucket list and it feels like then you have to replace it with something else and I can't probably ever buy a full manuscript so I don't know what I'm going to replace this with maybe a bigger leaf I don't know, we will find out. That won't happen anytime soon though. For now, I'm gonna enjoy this one. But talking aside, <laughs> I'm gonna just ramble forever. I have washed my hands already. I am not wearing gloves. Actually, this is something that I learned during a symposium in the Newberry Library, that if you are not someone who is a conservator or a surgeon or someone who uses gloves on a constant basis so that you're very used to uh, doing normal tasks with them, it is actually not helpful to wear gloves when handling delicate things because you lose the sensitivity on your fingers and since you're not used to that happening, you are more likely to damage it because you don't have your full sense into it. So the best thing to do is to wash your hands with soap and water, remove any rings, jewelry, bracelets, whatever you have around so that you avoid any chance of it snagging somewhere and causing any damage. Moment of truth. We're doing it. Now Dimitri's playing with that. Oh, okay, this is well packaged. Nothing left here. I think this is my receipt, which we will not look at. And uh, it is taped here. It's very little. I will talk about what it was in just a second. I need to open this. Sorry if I don't look up very much uh, while doing this. I need to live it too. You just get to hang out here with me. Just cardboard. All right. It's in here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Guys. I'm holding a piece of paper from the 14th century. <laughs> what? <laughs> How am I even allowed to do this? <laughs> uh, it just feels like uh, like I'm not supposed to be holding it. <laughs> like it should be in a museum. I'm going to show you a quick peek. So, to give you a little background, this is apparently a page of a Psalter that was independently commissioned, so it was for private use. This was not the church commissioning a big uh, book of prayer or anything. 
um, but it is so detailed. It is the size of that, my goodness. Uh, the size of that, of those letters are... I hope there was some very good sunlight when this was being made, because all I can think of is my cat is playing. Don't mind him. All right, so this is where Editing Mighty comes in and cuts out those 10 minutes of silence that just happened that you don't need to sit through, because I am a little wordless. That's not the term. Speechless. The irony. <laughs> all right, this is in vellum. Uh, although I don't know what kind of animal it is. It was very common to use calf skin, so we can sort of assume maybe that was that. It does have a little bit of damage on the edges. That is, of course, to be expected. The writing is done in Gothic hand, which means this is, this is the early Gothic because it's 14th century. Uh, so Gothic had only been used at this point for maybe around 100 years. It has illumination, it has marginalia, it has line fillers, it has miniatures, it has one miniature, there is one little head. Enough of me staring at this and being silent in front of you guys, I apologize. <laughs> uh, let's actually just take a deep dive into this and talk about all the little details that are here. I promise you that I will film the details as much as I it is humanly possible for me uh, and my knowledge of this camera. <laughs> I will do my best. All right, so now that I have composed myself from my excitement, I can actually properly talk to you guys about this piece and the details about it. So like I said earlier, this is a manuscript leaf from an English Psalter. It was purchased independently for private use. This leaf is from sometime in the 14th century, which makes it around 700 years old. You can definitely see the side where it was torn from a full-sized book. And you can definitely see a few damaged spots, whether that was because of water, Water or something else that got on it. This is the part of conservation that I don't really know much about. I don't know what is a possible thing that damaged this particular leaf. So if one of you knows how to identify imperfections in vellum, please write that in the comments. That would be awesome to get a little more insight on this. On to the actual written text and painted illuminations. I love how clearly you're able to see the markings, the grid that the scribe laid out in order to write in straight lines. In the margins we see a vine design with trefoil leaves at the end, which were a very, very common motif to include in Gothic manuscripts. And then involved in this marginalia, you can also see a few spots that some of them are in pretty good condition with the gold foiling. Throughout the gold foil you can see a bit of the gesso that was used to attach it to the page peeking out from where the gold has fallen off. Once we get into the actual text, this has a very standard layout of a psalm. Now for those of you who do not have a Christian or Jewish or religious background where psalms are involved in books of prayer, these are songs or hymns meant to worship, so they are written in verse. We can very clearly see the divisions between in each verse because each one starts with a capital letter and each one ends with a line filler because it doesn't necessarily reach the end of the line. And like I discussed in my Gothic Textura Quadrata video, part of the aesthetic that they were going for is for this woven, completely filled look in the page. Each one of these capital letters is also gilded in gold and we can also see in those line fillers there are circles in gold as well as that blue and pink color that matches the marginalia and some smaller details in white. Two other unique elements of this particular page are the miniature on the left side and the rubric on the left. When I say this, I am referring to what looks like a PS at the end of that ninth line in red ink. Rubrics were a very common feature of psalms and psalters. It basically works as a heading, as a chapter division, to separate one part from another. But another use for it that was very common in psalters was 
to provide instructions. During a mass or a religious ceremony, recitation or out loud response between the priest and the people attending mass is very common. So I am assuming this is again speculation, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming this particular rubric is there to provide instructions of when it is time for people to respond to what the priest was just saying by reading what follows. And then on the left, we have a little miniature. This is where we see a small human head inside of the letter D. I would love to know who that is supposed to be. The only reason why I am potentially assuming that that is meant to be Jesus or God is because it is inside of the letter D, which we can see is the beginning of the word Deus, which means God. So purely based on that, I am going to make that halfway educated assumption. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's some other character from the Bible that is very involved in this particular psalm. We don't know. I think I would have to work on translating this in order to figure out who that's supposed to be, if it's Jesus or if it's someone else, a different character of the Bible. The back side of this leaf is very similar to the front side, except that it doesn't have the marginalia or the miniature. It has the letters though, the line fillers, and of course the gothic text. It is definitely thinner than I expected. It feels very fragile. I was very, very scared <laughs> touching this and picking it up in order to show you, but I can assure you that it will be properly framed and protected so that it lasts as much as it possibly can. If this thing has lasted 700 years, I refuse to let it die in my hands. Thank you so much for joining me in this really, really exciting moment. I still can't believe it. After we are done here, I am actually going to a framing place that is near my apartment and having it properly framed with full conservation equipment, which includes UV protective glass, which blocks 99% of UV light, as well as conservation matting board. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video. Have a fantastic day. Bye.